When we hear Elon Musk, instant images of success spring to mind. But what if I told you it wasn't always the case? In this biography series, I pull back the curtain on the real stories and challenges Elon faced. For all of us on the entrepreneur's path, it's not just about learning from his triumphs, but also sidestepping the pitfalls he encountered. Today, we're uncovering these lessons behind the stories at SpaceX, and I hope you'll find sparks of inspiration. Let's begin. Chapter 22: SpaceX in the 2005 and 6: The Harder Path. Major Tim Mango is in charge of the facility, a facility that they really need to use. In order to launch the rockets, so here comes the story. Elon called Mango out of the blue and explained that he had been a founder of PayPal and had gone into the rocket launching business. Mango listened to him for a couple minutes and hang up on him. I thought he was nuts. Mango then did a Google search on Musk, saw a picture of him next to his million-dollar McLaren, that he started a company SpaceX, and realized that he was for real. Scrolling through the SpaceX website, Mango found the company's phone number and dialed it. The same person with a slight South African accent answered, and he said, "Hey, did you just hang up on me?" And they both want to make a deal. Major Mango wants to make the deal because he could use the commercial contracts to cover their budget. This is what Elon said. So Major Mango was rolling out the red carpet for us, where Air Force was giving us the cold shoulder, and then they make that decision. But just like the quote James Joyce have said, mistakes are the portals of discovery. Elon later on he also reflected upon and did not realize what a shit show it would be dealing with the logistic and the salt air. He says of Quatch. Every now and then, you shoot yourself in the foot. If you had to pick a path that reduced the probability of success, it would be launch from an inaccessible tropical island. And how scrappy and non-Boeing-like were the crew on Quatch? In early 2006, they planned to conduct a static fire test, one that ignites the engine briefly while the rocket stays attached to the launch pad. But when they began the test, they realized they need new capacitors. And Mr. Alton is an engineer working at SpaceX at the time, and he's about to be important character in this part of the story. And this piece of components are very important. However, they were only available in an electronics supply house in Minnesota. An intern in Texas was dispatched there. Meanwhile, Alton removed the power boxes from the rockets and jumped on a boat to Quatch. Slept on concrete slab outside the airport, waiting for the early morning flight to Honolulu, and made the connection to Los Angeles, where he was picked up by his wife, who drove him to SpaceX headquarters. There, he met with the intern, who had arrived from Minnesota with the new capacitors. He swapped them into the faulty power boxes and rushed home to change clothes before during the two hours it took for the boxes to be tested. And then he and Musk jumped into his jet. For the dash back to Quash, taking the intern with them as his reward, Alton hoped to sleep on the plane. He had been awake for almost 40 hours, but Musk bombarded him with questions on the technical details, and then they did run the test, and it was a success. However, the few weeks after the static fire test, they scheduled to launch Falcon One for the first time ever. Chapter 23: SpaceX in the 2006 and 7. The first failure, March 2006, the first Falcon One launch fails about a minute into ascent because of a fuel line leak. That night, everyone gathered in the open air bar on the island and quietly sipped beer. A couple of engineers cried. Musk brooded silently, his face like a stone and his eyes distant. Then he spoke very softly. When we started, we all knew we could fail. On the first mission, but we will build another rocket and try again. For once, Musk did not push everyone to move up at rap speed and swift away caution. Nevertheless, he did not try to eliminate all possible risks that would have made SpaceX rockets as costly and late as those built by the government. So he demanded a chart showing every component, the cost of its raw materials, the cost that SpaceX was paying suppliers for it, and the name of the engineer responsible for getting that cost down. 
And here's the important concept. What is slosh baffles? As a rocket ascends, the fuel remaining in its tank can slosh around. To prevent this, rigid metal rings can be attached to the inside wall of the tank. The engineers did that in the first stage of the Falcon 1, but adding mass to the upper stage was more of a problem. The launch team ran a variety of computer simulations to test the risk from sloshing. Only a tiny percentage of the models did it seem to be a problem. In the list they made of top 15 risks, number one was the possibility that the thin metal they were using for the rocket shell might bend in flight. Second stage sloshing was ranked number 11. So when Musk went over the list with his engineers, he decided they would accept some of the risks including slosh. The likelihood of most of this risk could not be determined just by simulations. The risk of slosh would have to be tested in a real flight. The test came in March 2007. And in the end, the rocket had reached outer space, but had failed to get into orbit. The decision to accept the 11th item on the risk list to not incorporate slosh baffles had, cam had come back to bite them. Had come back to bite them. From now on, Musk said to his team, we're going to have 11 items on our risk list, not just 10. Here comes my favorite section, leadership principles. There's a silly notion that failure is not an option at NASA. Failure is an option here, SpaceX. If things are not failing, you are not innovating enough. And here are five points I've concluded from the stories and quotes of Elon. Number one, embracing failure. Recognizing that failure is a part of the process and not something to be feared. It is a stepping stone towards success and innovation. And when we're listening to these, we can reflect in our day-to-day -day life. Continuous innovation. Stagnation or lack of failure might indicate that an organization or individual isn't pushing boundaries or taking risks, which are often necessary for significant advancements cultural difference between organizations like NASA and SpaceX. At NASA, usually they have been risk averse due to the stakes involved and new entrepreneurial ventures like SpaceX or even your own startup, which might be more willing to take calculated risks. And learning and adapting. Implicit in this quote is the idea that after a failure, one should learn, adapt and improve. It's not about failing for failure's sake but about using failure as a learning tool, as some data you gather from experiment and how to make your product or service 10 times better next time. And lastly, risk tolerance. Leaders must understand and set the risk tolerance level for their organizations. And here comes another Elon's quote. Persistence is very important. You should not give up unless you are forced to give up. And looking back in history, a lot of great people actually have failed so much from Thomas Edison to Nikola Tesla to Abraham Lincoln, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, and you name it. So upon closing this video, I would like to propose two questions for you to ponder. What innovation in your industry excites you the most and how could you be the forefront of it? And number two. What's one thing you believe to be true about your business that most people would disagree with? And I will really reflect upon these two questions. And feel free to drop the comment down below on your answers. Because as for entrepreneurs, it's important for us to exchange ideas among each other. Again, this is Jazzy. New episodes of the biography series coming out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Thank you so much for watching.